Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, why you might be having high B12 levels. What does high B12 level mean? And is it dangerous? So um, there's three main scenarios that I'm going to discuss, and I'll just briefly mention them here. Uh, number one is improper testing. Number two is has to do with cell membranes and transportation. And number three has to do with liver disease. So if you want to find out uh, a little bit more details on uh, what each of these mean and why it could be contributing to your high B12 levels, keep watching. We're all about helping you gain deeper knowledge and understanding of what's going on in your body. That's why we produce these videos. So hopefully this edition gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing these videos and uh, content that sometimes I get a slight thing wrong, like quoting something, a stat or a name of something. And so there's a corresponding blog article on our website, medicine forward slash blog, that has a lot more detail um, and we'll correct those mistakes if there are any. It doesn't happen that often, but sometimes it does. And the blog article will correct for those. Um, so I also wanted to point out that uh, if you like this type of information, please click on the like button um, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you watching. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, about any of the content, either here or on the blog, uh, that's what the comment section is for to ask those questions. So again, thanks for watching and let's dig into it. So what does a high B12 level mean? Uh, is it dangerous? Uh, what's going on here? Uh, so we're gonna get into the details of, uh, of all that, but first off, it's, it's not really dangerous to have high B12 level in and of itself, but you should be um, looking a little further into why it could be happening. And um, in this video, I'll, I'll discuss the three uh, things that most likely are causing it. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, these are the most common that I see in my practice. Okay, so scenario number one is uh, testing. So when you're doing a, a B12 test, typically it's a serum B12 test, and the ranges go from about 300 or 250 to 1,000 uh, or so. <clears throat> and uh, if you are taking B12 on a regular basis uh, in any form uh, and it's absorbing into your body, it's going to raise that serum level when you're doing your draw. Uh, so if you took uh, B12 when you were close to the test, uh, you usually want to give a, a couple days washout period, up to five days probably maximum um, would be, uh, well not maximum, but that would usually be a good time frame. Uh, you could wait longer and you know kind of see uh, what's going on. If you have like a really high B12 level, uh, you may want to you know not take any for like three weeks and see what happens. If you've been off of B12 for a really long time and you're still getting a spike, uh, then that's gonna, you need to look at uh, scenario number two and three. But a little bit more on testing. So the other is, of course, injections are gonna raise your serum level a lot more than just a oral tablet. Also depends the dose of your tablet, the dose of the injection, et cetera. Um, but if you're getting an injection, you wanna have a, probably a little bit longer of a washout period, uh, probably seven days at least. Um, and then how often you're getting that injection, et cetera, will sort of dictate you know, what the, uh, uh, likely uh, rise or, or high end of that B12 would be. I'm seeing them as high as 6,000. I've seen them, you know, uh, you know, as low as like 100 or less. So, uh, but in terms of testing, you do want to have a washout period when you're testing your serum levels. This is really the only uh, test uh, on a standard lab that there is available is the serum B12 level. There's no intracellular B12 level test uh, through standard labs. Um, and then, uh, so other vitamins too can interfere with the B12 assay, uh, specifically biotin. So you want to make sure you're not taking any biotin in close proximity to the uh, to the test. Um, so that's scenario uh, one. Improper testing can lead to high B12 levels. And in the case that it's, you know, that's the reason, then there's really nothing else to worry about. You know, you can, even the, the high level itself isn't really problematic. It might not be helping as much as you think, uh, but uh, but it could be. You know, some people just need to run at a higher B12 level to, uh, to get it into the body, to, into all the tissues. So, um, 
So that's uh, scenario number one. So scenario number two in this story of uh, why your B12 is high or what does it mean um, is relating to cell membranes and transportation of B12. So when your uh, B12 level is uh, really high, it could be that you don't, you're not, your body's not making uh, proper transport mechanisms for your B12. And this is just a, pro a carrier protein. All things in our bodies, almost everything needs to be transported on carrier proteins. And B12 is one of those. Um, and there are genetic alterations that basically won't allow you to make uh, sufficient amounts of these carrier proteins, which will lead to um, basically it's not g getting distributed throughout your body the way that it should. And the same thing goes to once it arrives at the cell, it has to get transported inside. And um, that has to do more with cell membranes. And so if your cell membranes are uh, fragile or you're not um, repairing them properly, um, that can also lead to higher B12 levels in the serum because it's basically just floating in the serum and then it's not getting uh, excreted out of the body or uh, getting into the cells and then um, it will you know, eventually get excreted out of the body but it's not actually penetrating into the tissues the way that it should. Um, and there's also genetic alterations in both the carrier protein, uh, um, it's called TCN, transcobalamin, and also um, the uh, cell membranes, which is a phosphatidylethanolamine methyltransferase enzyme, can be altered, which you know leads to instability in cell membranes or poor production of cell membranes. So both of those scenarios can lead to higher B12 levels. And then the third scenario that uh, you know can contribute to this high B12 level is sort of related to the second one. Um, and basically has to do with liver disease. So when you have problems with your livers like chronic hepatitis, uh, either from viral or alcohol or whatever, uh, the body's not able to produce, produce choline as efficiently and choline and uh, other uh, parts of the cell membrane production are not being uh, produced the way that they should. And this leads to um, basically high B12 levels. So because choline uh, and the cell membranes, a big part of that is produced in the liver, and it's not able to, to do that when you have hepatitis or um, problems with your liver, and this can lead to high B12 levels. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone with high B12 levels has liver problems. You should get it tested if you're you know, consuming alcohol on a regular basis. That could be part of it, um, or you know, just check your liver enzymes. Uh, it's a simple blood test, and that would sort of rule that out or rule that in. So that should give you a better understanding of what it means when you have high B12 levels and whether or not it's dangerous. Um, if you like this type of information uh, and this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.